Hello and welcome to our Career Essentials video on cover letters and personal statements. This is the first video in a three-part series that will take you through the key features and steps to writing cover letters or personal statements. When we talk about a personal statement in this video, we're referring to the big blank box on an application form that asks you to detail your reasons for applying and suitability for the role or something similar. In this video, we'll talk about the purpose of a cover letter or personal statement and why an employer might ask you to do one. We'll talk through the five key features of a successful cover letter or statement and we'll discuss selecting content and structuring it clearly for an employer or recruiter. So what is the purpose of a cover letter or statement? It's good to remember that your application comes as a whole package of your CV and your cover letter or an application form and statement. Recruiters often have a huge number of applications and will scan them quickly to decide whether to read further. Your CV acts as the hook to demonstrate what you, that you have some relevant experience or skills. It provides context to the cover letter, giving a factual account of what you did, when and where. Your cover letter or personal statement, however, gives you the opportunity to persuade the recruiter to shortlist you for the interview or selection process. It provides evidence of your suitability and highlights the relevance of your skills and experience to the role that you're applying for. And here are the five key features of a successful cover letter or statement. We'll talk through these in more depth, starting with the bit that many students tell us they find a challenge, their reasons for applying. We'll discuss how to organise your information into a clear structure, how to prioritise your content and make sure that you end up with a clear, concise and relevant cover letter or personal statement. So before you launch into writing your cover letter, take some time to mind map or note down the key points you want to get across to persuade the employer to interview you. A good starting point is to consider why you're applying for this specific role at this particular organisation. While you know you're applying to a variety of opportunities, your application needs to demonstrate to the employer that you want this role with their organisation. Avoid repeating what you find on their website. If you haven't already, it's time to do some research. You may wish to include points around how you found out about the organisation, what you've learned about the organisational role through your own research, speaking to grad links through the career service, or by talking to recruiters at, the, at events. You might talk a bit about um, what makes this organisation stand out against their competitors. Don't just consider what attracts you to the organisation. Make the connection between the organisation and you. What is it about them and the work that they do that's particularly appealing and why is that a good fit with you? Consider whether you've got any evidence to back yourself up here. And then you need to be direct. Identify the two or three key points you want to make about why you're applying. They already know why their work is important, so avoid essay style cliches. Get to the point quickly and directly. When writing your letter or statement, you won't be able to cover everything you've done. Before you start writing, you'll need to look at your skills and experiences and prioritise those you want to focus on in your cover letter or personal statement. Look again at the job spec or advert and use your research to prioritise the most important skills and experience for the role. Once you've identified what you need to get across in your cover letter or statement, look again at your CV. Where have you demonstrated those skills? Which experiences show the employer you have what they're looking for? Give the employer two or three highlights. Pick your best, most relevant examples to show how you've 
use the required skills. Aim for those which are particularly related to the sector or where you've been successful and made an impact or examples that might set you apart from others in other ways. The text part of your application is the prime place to persuade the employer that you're the right candidate and to make connections for the employer where it might not otherwise be obvious. For example, by explaining how a particular experience demonstrates one of the skills they're looking for. When selecting your content, never leave the recruiter thinking, so what, or wondering how it's relevant. When selecting examples, consider how you will make a link back to the organisational role using the research you've done so you can evidence that you know how what you've done before translates to what you're applying for. Once you've selected your key examples and evidence, the next step is to consider how you will organise and present your information clearly to the employer. In most cases, recruiters will scan your cover letter or statement in the first instance, so some careful formatting can really help to make your letter or statement inviting to read and ensure the information is easily located. So before you start writing, lay out your page using sensible margins so your content doesn't look cluttered or crammed in. Using small margins can make your document difficult to read and content may be cut off if it is printed. Ensure you have some line spacing between paragraphs rather than indenting them. It makes it much easier to scan the document. For a cover letter, the clue is in the name. It should be formatted as a letter with the address at the top and no more than a page in most cases. Top tip, you can format the addresses on the same lines by using a table, then hiding the grid lines. For personal statements, there's no need to format these like a letter. You will likely have a word limit for your statement, but if not, you should still aim to keep it as concise as possible. One to two pages maximum, depending on how many criteria you need to address. It's often absolutely fine to use headings to guide the reader. Occasionally, you'll be advised to do this by the organisation, so check for and follow any instructions carefully. Selecting a font that's the right style and size will make a big difference to the reader. Size 10 or 11 sans serif fonts like Arial and Calibri are much easier to scan than Times New Roman, especially on a screen. And align, align your text to the left to prevent uneven spacing that makes your letter more difficult to skim read. Now you've sorted the presentation, it's time to finally write your content. There are many different ways to write a cover letter or statement, and conventions may differ from sector to sector, so you shouldn't use a one-size-fits-all template for every application. If you're stuck or writing a cover letter or statement for the first time, then the following structure is a reasonable place to start. It uses a common four paragraph structure that most employers would find suitable. So you'd start with why you're writing. Um, here, just give some key details, for example, your course and graduation year. Note that you can swap paragraphs two and three around what you bring to the job and why you're applying, depending on which way flows better for you. These are the sections where you'll talk about the research that you've done and provide your evidence that you're a great candidate for the job. Finally, provide a short conclusion that summarises the key points you've made in your letter or statement. And here you can provide any additional details that you need to give, such as dates you're unable to attend an interview. As we've mentioned before, a recruiter or employer could have a huge pile of cover letters or personal statements to read. They won't always read every word carefully. So along with structuring your whole document clearly, each paragraph needs a clear structure too. Use an hourglass structure. This is where the most important details 
ideas or keywords go at the beginning and end of the paragraph with the detail in the middle. Each paragraph will need a strong opening sentence that highlights your most important message. You'll need to conclude each paragraph with a strong sentence too, summarising the point you've made in the paragraph, highlighting why it's relevant to the job you're applying for. Using this approach, an employer reading only the first and last lines of each paragraph should still be able to pick up your key messages. In addition to using the hourglass structure, try to avoid starting every paragraph with I. It has a dull hypnotic effect. Watch our next video on writing with impacts for tips on how to avoid this. Using this approach should help to focus your content, enabling you to demonstrate how you meet the employer's criteria and show that you understand how your skills and experience relate to the job that you're applying for. Check out our CV and application guides linked below in the video description for example cover letters and even more details on putting together a successful application. Check out the rest of our CV and application videos on writing with impact and evaluating your own cover letter or personal statement. And once you've got an outline, check out the next videos in this series to help you to persuade the employer you're the right candidate for their job. If you're writing a CV to go along with your statement, check out the video series on successful CVs too. Thank you for watching.